Resident Evil 2's reimagined Raccoon City is a terrifying place, reeling as it is from a catastrophic outbreak of a deadly bioweapon, which turns everything living and breathing that was exposed to it into vicious, hungry monsters with severe anger management issues. As such, there's a lot of horror going around in this survival horror title, and while that's something that should go without saying, it's worth noting that it's not always that easy to get horror right. All too often, creators fall into the trap of taking things so far, of making things so blatantly grotesque and the scares so in your face that audiences become quickly desensitized. Such is not the case with the incredible Resident Evil 2. The developer knows when to show restraint and when to let loose, and understands the profound impact of not playing their hand too early, of keeping things understated when they need to be, which is a funny thing to say for a studio that also made Resident Evil 6, but we'll let bygones be bygones. Resident Evil 2 doesn't bombard you with entire hordes of zombies. The iconic liquors are used sparingly and effectively. There aren't enemies in every single room and location that you visit, and every so often you come across a new type of enemy that changes the way that you approach combat, or if you even approach it. But no single enemy in all of Resident Evil 2, not even the liquors, encapsulates the game's style of horror as well as the tyrant, the hat-wearing, trench-coat-clad, hulking and menacing Mr. X. Resident Evil 2 can be exhaustingly intense when it really wants to be, and make its players feel suffocated under the weight of its oppressive atmosphere. It's no coincidence that when that does happen, and it happens a lot, Mr. X is somewhere in the vicinity. But before we get into just what makes Mr. X so scary, let's first talk a little bit about what he is and how he functions within the game. Sent by Umbrella to Raccoon City to kill any remaining survivors as part of his mission to destroy all evidence of any wrongdoing on their part, Mr. X incessantly stalks both Leon and Claire, who are among said survivors, with frightening focus. In terms of gameplay mechanics, what that means is that after Mr. X makes his entry, about an hour or two into the A campaign and much earlier than that in the second run, he's basically a constant presence and a very threatening one at that. Though RPD isn't the only location we visit in Resident Evil 2, it is by far the one that we spend the most amount of time in, and for a large chunk of our time spent inside the police headquarters, a chunk of time that's even longer in the second run, Mr. X is right there in the building with us as well. He roams around RPD constantly, moving from room to room as he seeks out the player. More often than not, the game puts him in the section of the building that you're in as well, which means that he's never too far away. If you make too much noise, like say while shooting down a bunch of zombies, he gets alerted and quickly makes his way over, and if he spots you, his acceleration can be alarming, completely belying his large and hulking form. You can never be too careless, never lingering in any single area for too long. Knowing that he's always out there not too far away, bearing down on you, injects an incredible amount of tension into a game that's already overflowing with it. Every action that you take needs to take his presence into account. Solving puzzles, exploring environments, clearing rooms of zombies, looking for and picking up items. And if you ever have the misfortune of walking into a room with a liquor or two while Mr. X is chasing you down, well, best of luck to you. The sound design associated with Mr. X is also top notch. Much like the sound design of the rest of the game, actually. Moments when he spots you are accompanied with a blaring, percussive track that has to be among the best pieces in the game's soundtrack. But even more impressive than that are his footsteps. Yeah, his footsteps. While he's searching for you and going from room to room, you can constantly hear his loud, thumping footsteps, which grow louder and louder as he gets closer. There's nothing quite as terrifying as hearing the crash of his feet banging into the floor on the ceiling above you, or in the room next to you. What that also does though is provide a handy audio cue. When you hear him coming, you know it's time to bail. Which leads to the thing I want to talk about next. Mr. X is never treated as a mechanic to unfairly heighten difficulty, or artificially inject tension or dread. He's actually balanced really well. Surprisingly well, actually. His attacks hit hard. He's surprisingly fast and he's always on your tail. An enemy like him could surely break a game really easily, and his presence could easily become overbearing. But Resident Evil 2 balances him in such a way that you always have just enough tools at your disposal that if you use them correctly, you can most of the time stay at least half a step ahead. His footsteps are one such tool, which I've already mentioned, but there's also the fact that Mr. X isn't constantly chasing you per se. 
He chases you when he sees you, but such moments happen organically during the course of gameplay and are very rarely scripted, and as such, avoidable if you put your mind to it. When he does see you, you can always try to flee and escape his field of vision. When he loses track of you, he goes back to going from room to room to look for you again. What this also does though, is that it makes you actually pause and think about the route that you want to take when going from point A to point B. The RPD is a location you become intimately familiar with in Resident Evil 2, as has often been the case with several locations featured prominently in the series. For example, the Spencer Mansion, the Baker House, and others. And so, while you are planning what path to take, which corridors and rooms to weave in and out of to try to avoid Mr. X, or at least make sure that even if you do run into him you're not backed into a corner, you have the advantage of knowing the layout and structure of the RPD very well. This of course also mingles with the slow and steady unlocking of the building as a whole. Boarding up windows, clearing out rooms, and unlocking doors to open shortcuts becomes infinitely more satisfying, because going forward you know which routes are safer than others. So while you do feel powerless in the intimidating and oppressive presence of Mr. X, the game makes sure that you're never really helpless. It also helps that Mr. X isn't really invincible. Unkillable, sure, but not invincible. He can't one-shot you. If he closes in on you and grabs you, any secondary weapons you might have equipped act as your last line of defense. If you want a reprieve from his incessant stalking, you can also try to temporarily stun him. Upon taking enough damage, Mr. X goes to his knees and he stays like that for a handful of seconds, giving you plenty of time to escape. Compose yourself and get back to doing whatever it was that you had set out to do. Considering how much damage is required to make that happen though, it can feel too wasteful, especially since ammo is always in short supply. But the option is there for you. But Mr. X isn't a new addition to Resident Evil 2 made by the developers in the remake, of course. He was in the original as well, so what's all the fuss about, you might ask? Well, much like the entire game itself, Mr. X has benefited greatly from the new tech that the developers have at their disposal, and are no longer constrained by the limitations of 1998 hardware, and he's been expanded and improved upon heavily. He now functions a lot more like Nemesis from Resident Evil 3, who himself was an upgraded version of the original Mr. X in many ways. Not only does he just look and sound infinitely more intimidating, his capabilities are also no longer limited by things such as not being able to follow the player through doors, which might sound minuscule, but it has a huge impact. And that's just one example. And that actually brings me to one final thing I want to point out when it comes to Mr. X. Capcom have created what is essentially the perfect template for them, if and when, most likely the latter, they get to recreating the terrifying Nemesis in a potential Resident Evil 3 remake. Back in the original RE3, Nemesis functioned in many ways similar to how Mr. X does now, which is something we've already noted. A stronger and faster enemy than the original Mr. X, one who is a much more constant and pervading presence, and is actually even more dangerous, owing to the more vicious attacks and behavior. A reimagined take on Nemesis with improved AI, complex and intelligent spawn points, and the ability to create dynamic paths by, say, smashing through walls at unpredictable moments, would surely make for a truly terrifying villain. And there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that that would be exactly what Capcom would be looking at doing. Mr. X already improved upon his namesake from 1998's RE2 in significant ways, but his presence also spells exciting things for the future. Because in a potential remake for Resident Evil 3, Capcom can improve even upon the new and hulking tyrant. Just imagine a game where Nemesis is constantly stalking you, based off of the same framework as the new Mr. X, but has even more dangerous attacks, characteristics, and artificial intelligence at his disposal. It's a terrifying and exciting thought indeed. People often say that Resident Evil 2 is the Terminator 2 to Resident Evil's Terminator. They say it often because it's surprisingly accurate. It really does feel like that much of a leap, and it's no coincidence that Mr. X feels like the series' own take on the T-1000. Oh, and he wears a hat. And you can shoot it off his head. And you get a trophy for it. Which I really like. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily. Also, don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our videos.